Hello, everyone. My name is David Santos. I'm an NSX engineer. And today we're going to take a look on NSXT 3.0 and what we can do with that. So uh, NSX 3 3.0 has three main use cases, and we're going to talk about each one of them. Uh, the first one is automation. As automation, we can, uh, we can understand that as network virtualization. So create like logical suites, logical routers, logical firewalls. Uh, we can like create those um, on our virtual infrastructure or uh, align with a broader uh, automation strategy with VRA, VR, uh, VIO, or like Kubernetes. Uh, the second use case is security. So increase the security posture inside the data center uh, applying applying security rules uh, to the east-west traffic or like to the traffic that's coming like, uh, coming in and out from a VM or a container. Uh, and the third use case is the business availability. So uh, NSX can stretch the data centers and easily provide like multi-site architectures and uh, disaster recovery strategies. So we're going to start with the first use case, that's automation. The benefit of NSX for automation is that it's a single endpoint for network virtualization. So here in the left, we have like uh, VRA, VIO, vCloud Adapter, Kubernetes, Terraform, uh, can also have Ansible and other platforms. And those, uh, those, those orchestrator, orchestrators will deploy VMs and containers. However, for those workloads that communicate, we need to also provide networking. So NSX will provide layer, uh, Faro, uh, connect, uh, Faro, uh, security, uh, network connectivity, routing, and also load balance. The, other thing that's really good about NSX is that it uh, it also has governance among all those objects. So when it creates a logical suite like a layer two uh, uh, network, it will know what's connected there and when you, like when the workload is removed, that connection is also removed and uh, together with all the FARO rules that belongs to that object. So this way we can uh, control the life cycle of like a workload or like um, any any application. Uh, to start with with uh, uh, to start with automation, we do our hello world in SX. In this case, the hello world is a layer two network. Uh, we're gonna create a, a, a switching, a logical switching. And we're going to connect two workloads here, Web1 and Web2. And we're going to do that in the NSX UI. Here we are in the Web01. We're going to try to communicate to Web02. Uh, the communication doesn't work. So we're going to create a new network called Web. Um, create that on NSX in NSX UI. After that, we can go to the center and connect both, work, both workloads in the same network. The network will be available in NSX UI, and we just need to consume that object. After connecting the, both VMs in the same network, the communication works, so we have layer two connectivity between web01 and web02. The next step is the routing. So the communication between uh, workloads connected in different subnets. To do that, we're gonna use an uh, object called T1 gateway or T1 router. It will be the default gator for each one of the segments that will be created in NSX. T1, uh, T1 gator or T1 router uh, are uh, T1 
kernel-based routers. So they're going to be distributed routers that will, will work uh, at the hypervisor layer. This way, we're going to have the same IP address for routing, like in your in all uh, networks, in all the hypervisors that are part of the NSX domain. In this case, we're going to create a T1 T1 gateway that will be the default gator for segment web and also for segment app, where we have the app the app O1 VM. Here we are again in the web O1, and we're going to start to ping the default gateway. Uh, we don't have a T1 gateway yet. We're going to create the T1 called V1, a T1 V brown bag. After creating that, we just need to configure that as a default gateway, a default gateway for our web network. Here I select my T1 and I choose the IP address that, that will be the default gateway. After configuring that, I successfully can ping the default gateway and I will start to ping other network, in this case, the app network. I'm going to configure that network to use the same T1 gateway and configure the IP address. After that, we also have connectivity between web and app in a router basis. After that, we need to figure out how this, this virtual network will communicate with the external world. So to do that, we're going to have a router here called T0, and we're going to connect the T1 with T0, and here we're going to share the routes using a, a, a mechanism called routing plumbing, and this will automatically redistribute, redistribute the routes that are connected, and also can redistribute the routes that from a NAT and for load balance for VPN and also can create route maps to select which route we're going to redistribute automatically to T0. And after that, the T0 will redistribute, will exchange routes with the fiscal router using BGP. In this case, uh, I will try to ping my web one and I can see the ping doesn't work. So I'm going to access my T1 gateway and connect that to T0 and select the connected segments to be redistributed. After that, I can, con I can ping my Web01 successfully. Uh, the next step is uh, is the security. So the security part we can use with uh, with overlay or not. We can deploy a security poster in the environment, like in the data center, even uh, without using NSX overlay, which means that we can deploy that using a regular VLAN. Uh, in this case, we have like two VLANs here. We have the VLAN 100 and the VLAN 200, well, where we have uh, vSphere workloads, also KVM, Kubernetes, and some bare metals here. So uh, what NSX will, will do, it will deploy an uh, element called DFW. DFW is the distributed portal of NSX. And it will take a look, and actually it will uh, enforce the security post posture at the VNIC level or in containers at the CNIC level. This way, if you have like a, a communication that's not allowed, you will block that communication at the nearest, uh, the, the nearest point of the application. In the case of a pod, it will block in the contain the pod the uh, the pod port. In the case of VM, it will block at the VNIC. Uh, it will also can uh, in in, uh, in our environment we will deploy a security rule that will block the communication 
between web and app, uh, and you allow the communication of like HTTP. Here we are at the Web01, and we're going to ping the Web02. The communication uh, works successfully. We also can do an SSH, and you can also access that using Cur. So here I have the, uh, our distributed firewall. I'm going to create here a section called DFW v brown bag, and I'm going to uh, include some rules here. So here we're going to create a new security group. The security group will be called uh, Web v brown bag, and I will select the members. So uh, you select uh, uh, the members based on VM. I also can create like dynamic rules to include the members dynamically. And uh, this way I did it manually. So those, uh, those VMs will be statically uh, belong to that group. And I'm going to create also two other uh, Draw the rules here allowing HTTP traffic either in L7 and L4. Uh, and something that's really nice about this, this UI is that it has a drag and drop, and it's a HTML5 uh, drag and drop, and it works really well. So here it's, uh, I'm allowing the HTTP for L, L4 and L7. And after that, I can try to ping the communication. It will be prohibited. And if I try to do also an SSH, it will be prohibited. However, uh, the web application it still works either from inside, or from inside or the outside world. Uh, the next step is business continuity. So we can use NSX to uh, extend our data, our, our data centers and easily deploy a disaster recovery strategy or a boot site strategy. Uh, in this case, we have two clusters here, cluster A and cluster B. And they are different clusters. In this case, we're using the same vCenter for those clusters, but they can be different P centers. Uh, in the version 3.0, I think we can integrate up to 16 V centers to NSX. And so having the work like the processing, the hypervisor layout identical, we can, you, you're going to use the NSX to provide L2 connectivity between the between the, the data centers. This way, we only need to do a vNotion to have that to have that workload running in the other data center. And all the network parameters like IP address, and DNS entries, or DSW rules will be maintained in the second data center. Uh, for north-south traffic, in this way, we are, we are using like an active standby where we have uh, edge node for T0 active in site one and a standby node in site, in site B. There's, to do that, this way we have uh, uh, a maximum latency of 10 milliseconds if you have less than 10 milliseconds, we can use that. Otherwise, we need to provide other kinds of, uh, of strategy for now south for now south. And also, the ads are exchanging BGP with like the fiscal, uh, the fiscal layer. And once the edge node that second edge node one got failed, and uh, the site B will We'll start to use the add node two as active doing BFD. So BFD allows right, the fast converse between fails. What we're gonna do for our testing, we're gonna start a ping to Web01, and after the ping, we're gonna do a vMotion and see 
how the L2 stretches across sites. So here I'm doing the ping to Web01 and I'm gonna to migrate my Web01 to the site B. Here I'm gonna select the host in site B that I want to host uh, that VM now. In this case will be Web01, the network will be the same. And after the emotion, we can see it here that we, the, uh, the emotion worked successfully and the communication uh, didn't stop. That's all I have. Thank you very much and see you next time.